And Lucifer at the time was given command over all creation. The whole material order that would come to be. Remember the angels, according to many church writers, fathers, doctors, were created before the material order, before the planets. But having failed in his test of loyalty to God and having taken a third of the angels with him in rebellion, Satan lost this paternity over all creation. He was really the father of the material order. And this is perhaps why Paul says in his letter to the Ephesians that Satan is the prince of the powers of the air. Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. As always, let me start the video by saying thank you so much to all of you for taking the time to watch our videos, and hopefully you'll always learn something useful for your own spiritual warfare from what we put together for all of you. I was watching an interview of Father Vincent Lampert recently, commenting on the old audio recording of Annalise Michelle saying out loud the six names of demons possessing her. Out of respect for Annalise Michelle, I won't be sharing that recording which you can easily find on YouTube, but rather from the movie Exorcism of Emily Rose instead. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I now command you, tell me your name! Put me who shot your head, but told you I be covered in the wrong way! And I really like what Father Lampert said in regards to this particular audio. The church has clear teaching on the reality that evil is personified, but a lot of the things that we witness, there isn't any clear teaching on that. So like, is she possessed by Nero? Is she possessed by Judas? That would raise the question, can the souls of the damned possess people? And so was that really Judas? Was that really Nero? Or were Hitler or whatever? Or were they demons who were mimicking those personalities as a way to feed into the audience, if you will? Because the gun, the, the, the goal of any demon would be to sow confusion, confusion, to really just make things really hard to understand and comprehend. And watching this, that's exactly what would happen. I was listening to an interview of Father Dan Rehill the other day where he talked a little bit about cursed objects. As you know, in another video I've shared a clip of Father Carlos Martins saying our society today is becoming pagan again and there's an increased fascination of witchcraft and the devil. The object, once it has this curse, usually they attach a demon to it. So if you take it into your home, it's basically it's inviting the thing into your home, right? They need the permission. Oftentimes, when I'm going through somebody's house, I'm going through room to room with the holy water. I'm looking all over for things. <clears throat> those dream catchers, no good. Please don't put those in your home. Um, oddly, do you know what the number one item sent back to Hawaii is? To Hawaii from people that have visited it. Lava rocks. There's allegedly a curse on the lava. And they will tell you in the tourism offices in Hawaii... Do not take the lava from the island because it seems to have bad effects on people when they get home. But of course, people go, well, that's just silly. Of course, we're going to take it home. And the number one thing that is mailed into Hawaii from people that have visited is the lava that they don't want anymore because all their life is falling apart. You can't touch the items that come out of somebody during an exorcism are cursed. And then if you touch them, you could wind up with boils all over your body or some kind of physical anomaly happen to you. They have to be, the curses have to be broken before you clean up the mess, so to speak. But there's cases of uh, frogs being vomited out, baby frogs, nails, nails like you bang into the wood, um, which of course couldn't live in a person without hurting them. So it's a supernatural uh, that happens from the demon and often just, it, they, they want to get attention. And, and they're looking to also hurt, like if the priest then were to try to corral the, let's say they're trying to get the frogs and they touch them, that would cause potentially a problem now for the priest. Cursed objects, it's not like they're lying in the street waiting for you to pick them up, although I guess that could happen. So like, this is like, if you go to flea markets and you find weird looking voodoo dolls and things, don't buy those. It could have a demon attached to it. What did you buy that for? You know, or skull heads from a black magic shop. Well, don't do that. 
just I say when you're decorating your home, when you're making your home your home, walk through your home in each room and imagine Jesus and Mary are with you, one hand on each. And what are they seeing? Are you embarrassed of anything in your home? If you're if you would be embarrassed for them to see it, get rid of it. We must always remember our enemies are incredibly smart. And I think what Father Rehill said here illustrates what that means. For someone who's living a sacramental life, you would hope they wouldn't get to the, duped into some kind of giving themselves over, right? The devil's clever. The devil's very clever. So there was a case when I was in Rome studying of a doctor in Rome who was a Catholic, very Catholic man, Catholic family. And uh, one day he was approached by a colleague who said, you want to triple your income? And he says, well, of course. Well, who wouldn't? He says, come with me to this party this weekend. Just you, not your wife. So he goes, and it starts out like a normal cocktail party, very fancy. And then at some point in the party, these dozen men came walking in in black hooded robes and did some kind of a weird um, ceremony, a ceremony that he didn't understand. And one of them eventually came up to him. He was introduced. This is uh, part of the group. And uh, we understand you're interested in in making, you know, triple your money that you currently make. And he said, well, yeah, but like, what what is this all about? And they said, well, we're, we're kind of a, a group that um, we have different worshipings that we do than what you're probably used to. But in order to, to gain entry, we would need you to give us one of your children. So think about this. So he says, well, of course, I'm not going to give you one of my kids. And the guy goes, not physically, just give us a name. And that's your offering to us. So he didn't believe in any of this devil stuff. So he gave the name of one of his kids. And within a couple of days, I believe it was a daughter. She was having night terrors every night. She couldn't sleep. She went into despair and she was suicidal by the end of the week. And he he knew what was happening. He put the pieces together and said, something bad's happening here. So he told his wife. Of course, she was not happy. And she called the priest and the priest called the diocese and they sent the exorcist. And he said to the man, you've created a big problem because these are very powerful people. And, and I can do the deliverance of your daughter, but you need to get out of here. Like you need to move to the south of Italy and don't tell anybody where you are because they will not want you to get out of this sort of like a contract he made with them. And so he did that. They sold everything and moved. And the girl was fine. She was set free. But like, here's a practicing Catholic who unknowingly steps into this situation where he gives them permission, right? The devil always needs permission, but sometimes he tricks people into yeah. thinking, this is just a game. Don't worry. Now it's time for the halftime message. It's something that I recently thought of just to take a break from all the talks of the devil. And let's talk about Jesus instead. Where St. Paul is saying there's one mediator, he's asking, he's telling Timothy to pray. And you see throughout scriptures, it, 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 it tells us to pray for one another. And we ask for prayers. So just like I would ask my mom on earth, because I know she loves me, and if I asked her to pray for me, I know she would seriously pray, I could ask my mother in heaven. You see, up until like a couple hundred years ago, when the Seven Day Adventists and Jehovahists came up with this ridiculous false teaching of soul sleep, all Christians, and most Christians today, most Protestants agree with Catholics, believe in eternal life. That when you're in heaven, you're not sleeping, you're alive. You're more alive up there than you are here. So Christians throughout the ages have always sought for prayer for those in heaven to pray for us. So just like I would ask you to pray for me, we ask the saints in heaven to pray for me. It doesn't take away from Jesus being the one mediator between us and God. We're all part of the body of Christ, whether we're in heaven or we're on earth. Anyway, I'd like to start this video with something that Monsignor Rossetti shared about the Virgin Mary and that Mary is the mother of exorcists. According to Monsignor Rossetti, he has never heard of Jesus personally showing up in an exorcism and casting out the demons. But it's also important to remember that Monsignor Rossetti said, it is in Jesus' holy name that the demons are cast out. As an example, once during an exorcism, a possessed person told the exorcist that whenever he said the holy name of Jesus, 
It makes the demons seriously angry, and he finds it very painful. Jesus' death and resurrection is the fundamental exorcism that smashed the devil's kingdom. The name and power of Jesus casts out demons. So then why doesn't he personally show up at exorcisms? Understanding who the devil is and thus his punishment is important. Remember that the devil tried to make himself equal to God. In your great pride, you still presume to be held equal to God. One might speculate that if Jesus, the God-man, were to show up in person to cast out the devil, it would support his delusions that he can be on the same plane as God, to challenge him, and to be equal to him. But the truth is that the devil is dust compared to Jesus. He is a lowly creature who has made himself even lower because of his evil. Moreover, it is often speculated by theologians that one of the reasons Lucifer originally rebelled against God was in response to the revelation of the Incarnation. For him, it was an insult that God would choose to exalt our lowly humanity instead of his superior angelic nature. Lucifer's pride blinded him, and he became enraged against Jesus and all of humanity, perpetually dedicated to destroying it. But what did God do? Well, we know that in response, Jesus sends a lowly woman from Palestine to cast him out. Her only weapons are her love for Jesus, her total humility, and her obedience to God. It is precisely in these that we humans triumph over evil, and according to divine justice, the devil is enduring a reality he never learned, the essence of true power belonging to God. Monsignor Stephen Rossetti, he said this and that he personally believes that the entire ministry of exorcism has been delegated by God to the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is the mother of exorcists. She is spiritually present at every exorcism, and she often makes her presence directly felt in casting out the devil. We've heard of so many exorcists talked about their love for the Virgin Mary. Have you heard any seasoned exorcist who does not have a deep, heartfelt devotion to the Mother of God? In fact, Monsignor Rossetti even tells new exorcists in training that such a devotion is not simply a pious addition to one's ministry. Instead, it is essential and exorcists begin every exorcism invoking the aid of the most powerful Mother of God. Anyway, for the next clip I'd like to share something from Father Yanuzi about the rebellion of the devil. I hope that you'll learn something from this as well. That Satan was given a vision from God that God himself and the second person of the Trinity would become not an angelic being, but a human being. And Satan, acknowledging that angels far surpass man in intellectual prowess than any other rational being, chose not to go along with this plan, this divine plan of God becoming man. Hence the rebellion of the angels. And Lucifer at the time was given command over all creation. The whole material order that would come to be. Remember the angels, according to many church writers, fathers, doctors, were created before the material order, before the planets. But having failed in his test of loyalty to God and having taken a third of the angels with him in rebellion, Satan lost this paternity over all creation. He was really the father of the material order. And this is perhaps why Paul says in his letter to the Ephesians that Satan is the prince of the powers of the air. Satan can manipulate weather too. The more sin intensifies, the more power Satan has over the elements. Now, when God gives himself, he doesn't give himself in portions. Like, I give myself 40% to the angels and 100% to man, and, and like 20% to the birds and 10% to the, to the rodents. That's not how God works. He always gives 100% of himself. But in the measure of the capacity he made the creature, all the saints in heaven are filled with God like glasses filled to the brim. But not every glass is made the same height or width. So God gives 100% of himself to all creatures, but in the capacity they can contain him. So he made our human nature in such a capacity that we can contain more of God than the angels can. And this is why Lucifer rebelled too. He didn't want to be less than another rational being that was created. And this is envy, this is pride, this is greed, which has no place in heaven. You see, in heaven, look at the little flower. She's completely happy to be a small glass because she's still full, full of grace. Even though there are bigger glasses in heaven, equally full of grace, you see. The image of God that we receive is the greatest capacity that God ever created. 
Well, the human nature is the greatest capacity to contain the image of God, even though we are the smallest, least of intellectual, rational beings in the universe. God chose us precisely because we are the least. He lifts up the lowly to high places and casts down the mighty from their thrones. For those who are thinking that everything we shared so far about the devil isn't real or hard to believe, I think what Father Rehill shared here will be particularly useful for all of you. The biggest problem I see is that there's too many people who don't believe any of this is real. And if you don't believe, then you're willing to do things that you wouldn't normally do. So I have a case I'm working on right now of a woman in this diocese who is a very smart attorney, and she actually works in the uh, rescuing children who are trafficked and abused. So doing good work and, and very intelligent. And she, I said, how did this all start? What was happening? And she said, I noticed things in my bedroom would move around at night. And she has a husband who's, you know, in the same room with her. And he, you know, he didn't see it. So he's like, well, you know, I was sleeping, so I don't know. And this went on for a couple of days. And she finally said, you know, if there's really somebody, something in my room, then touch my hand. And something grabbed her hand. And then she kind of pulled back and said, oh, and then she started having a dialogue with this thing and said, who are you? And it was claiming to be her uncle who was deceased. And it escalated and escalated and escalated. Within two weeks, this thing was horribly abusing her physically. And she couldn't sleep because she was afraid to go into her room, even with the husband there. And uh, eventually she wound up calling. So she She's not a Catholic. She's a she is Christian, but not Catholic. Her husband was Catholic. And so they eventually she wound up in with me. And uh, I've got a few more steps to get her free. But, you know, again, your intelligence. And she said, I can't believe I feel like an idiot for this happening to me. I'm so embarrassed. And I said, well, the problem is, you know, you're a smart person, but you don't know that they're smarter because you didn't believe in them. But the pure spirits are more intelligent than human beings for the most part. Coming up against an entity that can outwit you, they're around you when you don't know it. They're, they listen to your conversations. This is how psychics work, you know. And then they start giving you information about deceased ones that had private conversations with you, but they weren't really private because some there was a demon in the room that can imitate what the person said. And if you don't believe, you're going to go, of course, it's my deceased friend. Finally, for the last part of this video, let's listen to Monsignor Stephen Rossetti praying for us. An exorcism is fundamentally a fight over the person's, essentially, soul. Who do you belong to? Essentially, do you belong to Jesus or do you belong to Satan? And Satan will often, always actually, claim uh, possession. And so one of the first things out of a demon's mouth is, you belong to me. And then we say, no, no. This person belongs to Jesus. This person has been baptized. This person claims Christ as his or her savior. So let's do that now. Let's pray with me. I'm going to do the uh, renew the baptismal promises, which is fundamentally saying, I belong to Jesus. So do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Let's say it with a little more energy. Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, died, rose from the dead, now sits at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church? The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body and life everlasting? I do. I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of his cross. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you and I belong to Jesus. Well, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and hopefully you've learned a lot from this. For those of you who'd like to support our works, I left a link to our PayPal donation down in the description box below, 
and any amount of contribution is very much appreciated. We are doing this full time and it is truly a humbling journey so far. And I'm learning so much from all of you as well, what you wrote down in the comments. Well, until the next video, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you.